Hello everyone, it's Mark Sabatella from Mastering MuseScore. Welcome to the MuseScore Cafe. So this is my regular uh, series I do on Wednesdays where we talk about some aspect of making music using MuseScore. We look at individual features, we look at different use cases, take questions, we do, uh, you know, whatever it takes to help us all learn how to use MuseScore most effectively. So, um, today's session I want to talk about the idea of migrating scores into MuseScore 4. In other words, taking an existing score that you might already have had in MuseScore 3 or one that you downloaded from somewhere and loading it into MuseScore 4 and seeing what you might need to do to, you know, to be able to work with it. So that's uh, that's what the uh, agenda is today. And okay, so one thing I just noticed just now was at one point during you know when I was doing things, I must have turned off the playback of repeats because that repeated section in the score, that place where there was the vamp, that gives me more time uh, for the jibber jabber here, um, uh, that didn't repeat. So I must have. No, I didn't turn off repeats. I think in this version of the score, I didn't tell it how many times I want to repeat. So let me just show you how to do that. I actually recreated this score from scratch. Um, maybe not totally from scratch, um, but at least partially. So if I go to measure properties on this measure with the repeat, here it says play count two. I think I had actually turned that up in the original version to like so it would repeat like, I don't know, seven times maybe? I don't even remember. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. I am going to bring in the old original version of the MuseScore theme and talk about what needs fiddling with. So, Heis, I see you have a, uh, um, you know, your picture is uh, definitely telling me a story here that I think I understand. And that is, in certain cases, for, cert for reasons that I don't understand, when you select a measure, uh, the blue rectangle sometimes isn't right. And to be honest, um, it's just a bug, right? But I've never figured out what causes it because when I want it to happen, it doesn't happen. I mean, mostly it works right. My guess is it has to do with maybe invisible staves or something. I, I don't really know. So if you have that score that you can upload here, uh, then I can download it, and yeah, I'm happy to take a look, uh, but I, it's just a bug and needs to be reported. I don't think there is a bug report about that on GitHub that, that, that I remember. So, um, yeah, my, my main goal here is to look at the process of bringing in a score f from MuseScore 3 and MuseScore 4 and figure out, well, either what bugs need to be worked around or what features have changed how they work or maybe what's different about the playback where you might need to adjust some levels in the mixer or what's different about the engraving where you might need to reset some manual adjustments or, you know, stretch settings and so forth. So um, uh, that, that's what I want to do here. And then also I mentioned I do want to give a little brief overview of some of the things that you probably are already seeing in the community that I shuffled some spaces around. I want to talk a little bit more about my, my thinking here, where I'm going with it, and uh, just help you uh, be comfortable with where things are. So um, anyhow, I'm going to start by loading up the old version of the MuseScore theme. So this was originally, if I go to my Mastering MuseScore folder here, and then Cafe, I have this version right here, MuseScore Cafe. This version I haven't modified uh, since September. I believe this is the old version. Um, I'm not sure why it was modified in December, but I guess we'll find out. Hopefully I get a little dialog box here saying, hey, this is um, an old score. Yes. Okay, so it says it was last saved in 3.6.2. So I'm going to go ahead and load it. Now this is, for me, one of the typical types of scores that I work on. It is a score involving, uh, it's a jazz, it, it was created with the jazz combo template, and it uses rhythm section, and it uses, um, uh, you know, chord symbols and some other features. So one thing that I know is different about this compared to how it was in MuseScore 3 is it used to be the case that 
this first system fit along with the title page. So I wouldn't say that that is a common thing to expect, that, that things will take more space than they did before. In fact, it's probably more common that it would take less space than it did before. But I do want to maybe try to understand where that extra space is coming from and seeing if I can adjust for it. So this is the MuseScore uh, 3 version. You know, this is in MuseScore 3. This is that same score in MuseScore 4. And I'm just looking to see if I can, like, eyeball what I think might be responsible for the extra space. And I actually see exactly what it is. It's <laughs> this uh, mezzo forte marking right here is not in, is not in the, s oh, yeah, look at that. So I did I do that on purpose? This mezzo forte marking here is on the guitar staff. It's on the guitar staff here, but then there's the word mute. Ah, the word mute is above. Okay, so here's the thing. I might have made an adjustment. I'm not really sure when I when I redid this one, but I didn't know. Right, this is me loading the same score. So somehow this text that says mute um, is below the staff instead of above. I'm going to hit Control-R to see if that changes it. I think what happened is this mute text here is a new type of text. It used to be when you wanted to add text like mute or pizzicato or arco, text that affects the playback, those were staff texts that just happen to have settings. Now what you're going to find is these markings here, pizzicato, arco, mute, etc., these are a new type of text now. And um, that new type of text didn't exist in MuseScore 3. So when MuseScore 3, like it, if I look at that same text in MuseScore 3 here, you'll see it's a staff text, but it got converted into this new thing called a playing technique annotation. So these markings that affect playback are um, uh, a, a new type of marking, and so the style settings and so forth for this are going to be different. And by the way, uh, uh, hello to everyone saying hello, and I, I thank thank everyone for uh, introducing yourselves. And uh, Marla, I see that you mentioned having uh, a friend here with you, and so uh, uh, well, welcome to Chad as well. Um, so uh, that is that fact that this playing technique annotation. Uh, is defaulting to below the staff, I think that's not normally the case. Normally, I think in a new score, in fact, I, I guess I got to try it, right? I got to try a new score here um, because I'm, I'm still learning a lot about this process and I'm going through it with you. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, we're going to find little details like this, just little details that it's good to understand what's happening. Here's my theory while, while I uh, create the new score here. Um, my uh, my theory is that staff text in my uh, in my template in the jazz combo template staff text defaults to below the staff, um, and that is so it avoids chord symbols. So it's a little unusual. Usually staff text defaults to above, but the jazz combo template staff text defaults to below. So I think what we're finding is. Um, uh, that that has changed. And yeah, it looks like this is going to be one of those days where while I'm broadcasting, my system has gotten painfully slow. But um, let's see. I'm going to just try one thing. I just want to try adding one of those markings just to make sure it normally does default to above. And it does. All right. So now that I know, so, so did y'all follow that? I kind of interrupted myself mid-sentence there. This uh, staff text in the jazz combo template defaults to below so that it can avoid chord symbols. I had already fiddled with my staff text to put them where I want, but when this got converted from staff text to playing annotation, playing technique annotation or whatever, that didn't happen. So what I want to learn is, is there an actual text style for this and can I set its default? Um, so Chad, I see you're saying you can't get volume. Do you mean you don't hear me? Um, can someone ask that in the chat? Um, ask Chad if, if he's 
having trouble hearing me or if he's having trouble hearing MuseScore, uh, try to get some clarification about that and we'll see if we can help. But meanwhile, I'm gonna keep talking because um, apparently it's working for other people. So what I wanna do is find out if I can set these playing technique annotations to be above the score. And I'm gonna go to the properties panel and under more is where it's gonna show. It is actually still getting the staff text style. So I'm just gonna to have to manually flip this above the staff like I did before. So that's that's basically the story. I just got in MuseScore 3 I had manually flipped it above the staff. That manual flipping would have been preserved uh, but it if it had stayed a staff text, but because it got converted to another type, that didn't work anymore. So that moving of that mute up here closed up a little space. It still doesn't totally let this uh, first uh, page fit. So I'm still not sure what's going on, and I want to take another look at this to see if I see anything else funny going on. Had I reset, you know, I, it, it could be one of these things where I just have to choose to not worry about it because uh, it doesn't actually matter to me if this fits on the first page or not. But, um, you know, it also could have something to do with how the header and the footer works. You know, there's any number of reasons why this might not fit anymore. Um, if I wanted to force it to fit, though, let's, let's just say I want to force it to fit and see uh, what else I might do. Let me just take Another look at it in MuseScore 3. It looks like maybe this guy here. Did I re yeah, I'm looking for things that I might have manually adjusted to try to close up some space. Let me turn on, oh, the, the, that's already, I want to turn on the margins. So if I have nothing selected in my score, I can display margins so I can see margins. And I think the fact that the page number uh, it now appears within the margin here and MuseScore allocates extra space for it. That might be a little bit of what's going on. Um, yeah, it's always a little bit of an adventure. Oh, look at that. Look at what I did with the drum here. Look at that. I had moved that dynamic marking closer. So MuseScore, when you import things, when I imported this score, um, there was an option to uh, you know reset some things. If I move this now, Still not doing it. Well, that was a good guess still. Um, could have to do with the shape of that slur. Oh, this tempo marking. Yeah, the tempo marking. Did I pull that in a little closer? Maybe I pulled that in a little closer. You know, there's any number of things like this that I might have done in the original that allowed it to fit along with that frame. So whatever, I could spend forever trying to figure that out, or I could just say, you know what, not worth my time, I'm not gonna worry about it. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'll come back to it if someone likes. Um, okay, so um, the, um, can the, so I'm looking at questions here, and Maureen's asking, can that mute text be changed to consordino? Uh, and yes, you can absolutely edit the text, and it will still be understood. It's not totally just going off the text. Now, Muse Sounds does have the ability to read your text and try to interpret it, but I'm pretty sure those predefined markings will continue to work anyhow. Now, one thing that I learned already, let me go ahead and play this score, and then you're going to hear something. Actually, let me just play it. Here we go. Now, wait a minute. You know, I'm thinking. This mute wasn't affecting the guitar before. The theme is is migrating scores, so it has to do with like bringing older scores into MuseScore 4 and, and adjusting things. So right now, I have two versions of the MuseScore theme uh, open here, and so now I'm realizing uh, I want to make sure I have the right one going, so I'm going to close the other one. This is the other one. Um, did I close the wrong one? I might have, or it might have crashed. Um, by the way, Joaquim, um, I am <laughs> I'm following your progress and seeing, you know, I can see progress and I see you are, uh, you are the, the, the head of the leaderboard if there were such a thing. You are, um, uh, you, you are 100% 
uh, up to date on the course. You've watched all the all the lessons. Uh, my hat is off to you. Um, I'm going to continue to try to stay ahead, uh, a step ahead of you. But you have caught up to me right now. So I got some I got some more lessons to to record today and keep adding lessons and keep uh, building the course and so forth. So um, so yeah, this mute text uh, was not affecting the playback on the guitar originally. So th th what the guitar is doing here, listen to the guitar. That mute sound is due to this uh, text here. And that wasn't working during the beta. So when I had imported this before, I had converted that to an actual palm mute symbol from the lines palette. Because um, the, the lines palette uh, has, uh, or the guitar palette actually, has this special um, palm mute line here that you could add. So I had actually converted that mute sign to a palm mute sign months ago when the mute sign wasn't working for a guitar. But now that I know it is, I'm quite happy and now I can just um, just do this and uh, have that work. All right, so those are some things here. Um, Lisa is asking about a solo instrument line shown by itself. So um, so I'm guessing, I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking, Lisa Joe, but uh, I think maybe you're talking about showing parts. So this is the full score. And in MuseScore 3, notice in MuseScore 3, it was already, I had already generated the parts for all of my individual instruments here, right? I had already, in, already uh, introduced already generated those. MuseScore 4, when you first load one of your old scores, it's not going to show those tabs to you by default. But if you click the Parts button, you'll see they are in fact all there and all you got to do is say Open All and now they are visible here. So if that's what you're asking, well this is how you can see the piano part. Um, so having a solo instrument line shown by itself. Oh, but you want the, you want to, you want to Okay, so you want to hear other parts. So you would have to actually do this. Let me go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do that because, you know, it, everything is so new here. I'm going to expect to answer more questions that don't necessarily, you know, relate to the theme, but that's okay. Let's say I want to create a trumpet part that can also hear the piano. What I'm going to do is right here on the trumpet part, I'm going to go to the instruments panel, and I'm going to turn on the piano part. Now I can see the piano part and hear it. So when I play this thing, I'll hear them both. Oh yes, and that top note, of course, didn't play. I'll come back to that in a second. Now, you don't want to see the piano part, right? You want to hear it. And of course, if I hide the piano part again, I'm not going to I'm not going to hear it either. So what the the new way of doing this is I want to show the instrument but I want to hide the staves for it. Now it will play. So that's how you do that now. This MuseScore 3 didn't have that ability. It didn't have the ability to hide staves individually. You could only hide the full instrument. Now you can hide staves individually. So you can have an instrument with multiple staves and hide one but not the other, etc. And that is how you can get the playback because hiding the instrument will indeed mute it currently. The design for that is still subject to some change, but um, that's how it's working currently. Now one of the other things that I just noticed here, and you probably heard this as well, is when I played this, that last note didn't play. And that is because Muse Sounds is designed for orchestral music, not for jazz, not for pop, not for not for any other styles in which that E flat is considered a fair game. In classical music, <coughs> excuse me, that note is considered out of range, right? You're not supposed to write above a C or a D. <coughs> excuse me. A D at most. So that note was not sampled in <coughs> excuse me, in Muse Sounds. There is no sample of a high E flat for trumpet, which is kind of a drag, right? And this is a common, you know, this has already been reported and they're very aware that yes, this is something they want to address. They've already, by the way, addressed it for, for some instruments like bassoon. Bassoon didn't used to go up to a high C, but a high C is like, if anyone knows, uh, well, you probably, some, some of you know what I'm going to talk about already, but the single most famous note ever written for bassoon is the high C that starts Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, right? 
Right, that line starts with a high C for bassoon. So the original version of Muse Sounds didn't have that high C, and you can imagine the uproar among bassoonists and among Stravinsky fans and other people. So that has been extended, and I'm sure the trumpet will be at some point soon enough as well. So um, what this means is if I want to hear the cafe theme played the way I'm used to it, I am going to have to have that trumpet change from uh, um, I'm going to open the mixer. I'm going to click the mixer button here, and I'm going to tell it not to use Muse Sound. So here's something you need to know how to do. In the mixer, you can go and switch from Muse Sounds to Sound Fonts. And I have a whole lot of Sound Fonts that I've installed over the years, but MS Basic is the default one. It's basically the exact same thing that used to be Muse Score General, but now it is MS Basic. It's been tweaked a little bit, but it's essentially the same thing. So now I'm going to hear the trumpet with the original version of the uh, the playback there. So um, how do you default to page width? Oh, now that's a good question. So page width, uh, page width view, this hasn't changed since MuseScore 3. There's an option under Edit, Preferences, Canvas, and Default Zoom Page Width. So I rather like that setting. Um, I, I, I'm actually a little on the fence about it. Uh, you know, I keep going back and forth between defaulting to page width and defaulting to 100%. But um, yeah, right now apparently I have it on. Uh, I have it set that way. So um, so that's how you do that. So yeah, this score is already showing us a lot of these little nitty gritty details that might need fixing. So um, so. So Lisa Joe, um, I would I will say you might want to watch again. You know, go back after this session, go back and watch that video and see exactly how I did it because it's possible the details got missed. And if you're if you're if after that you're sure that you did it exactly right, then go ahead and post it to the discussion and support space within the course. And if you're not already enrolled in the course. Highly recommend it um, in the Mastering MuseScore 4 course. But there's also the, the free support forum over on MuseScore.org. You can ask questions and post scores there and get help. So there's lots of ways of getting help with MuseScore. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend my online course, of course. Um, so if you, uh, if you post your score there and describe exactly what you did, then we can try to sort out either what you did differently than what I did or some particular issue with your score that's causing it to not work or whatever. So we'll sort that out. So Maureen, it looks like your score has become corrupt is what it looks like. There is a known issue. And this, so first of all, let me tell you right now, every, for everyone, benefit of everyone listening, there, you know, every version of MuseScore ever has bugs, and you know, as they get reported, they, you know, they get prioritized and get fixed. Right now, the single highest priority bug known for MuseScore four is a is a situation that's unfortunately not very uncommon. <laughs> it's a fairly common situation where if you've generated parts and you insert measures after generating parts in the right, wrong order, whatever. I'm not even clear on all the details, but I know it happens often enough. In certain cases, your score will become corrupt. And this is a known issue that was discovered shortly after the release. And there is a fix for it pending. And this fix is now being tested. There will be a 4.0.1 release as soon as that testing period is done. So it's going to have a fix for that and a couple of other issues like the fact that on a lot of people's systems, some people's systems, uh, like my, my computer doesn't have a numeric keypad, but of the systems that do, on some systems that have numeric keypads, they work fine. On some people's systems with numeric keypads, they're not working. For their, their shortcuts aren't working because they're generating a different key code than the standard numbers. So on those systems, uh, people are having trouble with shortcuts involving numeric keypad. And there's a workaround. I've posted that already. I've talked about it in the newsletter. But there will be a fix for it coming also as part of 4.0.1, as well as a couple other miscellaneous bugs that have been reported that seemed high priority enough to be worth an immediate fix. So 4.0.1 is going to come out soon. So a hairpin issue, um, so 
for reporting bugs, I'm going to highly recommend that you go into, in fact, let me just show you where this is. If you go into the course, um, any of the spaces here within the course, like if I click here where it says Mastering MuseScore 4, that's the course, and then Bug Reporting, you'll see where you can um, report issues. So the potential issues are, I'm doing something, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right or if I'm doing it wrong, it might be a bug, might not be, this is where you'll go. Once someone has confirmed that, yep, this is absolutely a bug and it has not already been reported on GitHub, then this is where you'll go to report the bug. I do know there was a bug recently reported involving some specific case where hairpins um, didn't get transferred to parts. So, um, you know, that uh, it could be that the bug you're running to, into is a similar case. Um, in this particular score, that hairpin certainly did make it into the parts. How about if I try adding another one? I add another hairpin. Ah! And it crashed. So, I just discovered another bug that I get to report. It's always an adventure, yes? So, yes, I'll go ahead and re restore the old system, I mean the old uh, um, session. So there are a number of bugs that have been reported of specific cases in which something or other crashes. And I'm wondering now if that crash, after I added the hairpin, somehow relates to what you're seeing, Maureen, also. It could be, a, you know, different aspects of a similar um, bug that I, I don't really know. Um, but it certainly could be. So anyhow, uh, don't know what to say except uh, Post your maybe maybe use the the, the discussion and support space within the course to uh, report the problem and we can try to narrow it down and uh, I can see if it's something that is already reported or not. Meanwhile, I get to do the same with that crash, but I'm not going to touch that right now because I don't want it to crash again. So um, what I want to keep doing is just trying some other things to see what else. So I I know already in this score um, that there's not a lot else. Um, you know, everything that there was to see pretty much was there at the beginning. One thing is this whole little silly workaround I did at the beginning for MuseScore 3 that had a limitation. Um, and Bob, I do see your comment there. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Um, this little workaround that I had used, because MuseScore 3 didn't have a way of doing falls. Now MuseScore 4 falls play correctly, more or less. So um, this workaround is no longer necessary. But it did still work, right? When I played this part. Oh, yeah, this is the version because I I, uh, I haven't changed the sound yet. Let me go to this one. Uh, yeah, so that, that workaround that used to exist for how these falls uh, worked doesn't work correctly anymore. So I'm just going to delete all that crap. There, this will almost work with the with the fall, except it doesn't currently work with Muse sounds. So I'd have to change that to MS Basic, and then it would work again. But there is also a workaround where if I put in uh, an invisible fall before the tie, that will work. So yeah, the workaround. Uh, this score had a number of workarounds for Muse Score three limitations, and some of those no longer those workarounds have changed or they don't work anymore. So here's an invisible fall. On that note, now let's hear this. There we go. So Bob is asking about help report a bug. It takes you to the potential bug reporting place because the thing is. I can tell you right now, there are a ton of bugs reported on musecore.org, which is where that goes. Um, most of which are not bugs, or they are bug that they are bugs that just say I used musecore and it crashed. Well, that's not a useful bug report, right? In, in order for a bug report to be useful, we need to know exactly what you did. Someone like we need you to attach a score and give precise steps to reproduce the problem. So we they don't want GitHub cluttered with non-bug reports. So what they want is for people to report on musecore.org first, which is where that report a bug goes first. They want it to be reported there first, 
and and then be confirmed by someone else to make sure it's really clear that the the steps are sufficient to allow the bug to be reproduced and then um uh, then once it's confirmed and it's also confirmed that it's not already reported on github then it's time to open a github issue so um so rod you're talking about the exact same bug that maureen is or at least that maureen was that i mentioned yes there is a known bug this is why 4.0.1 is coming soon is to fix this exact corruption of uh, adding measures to a score after generating parts. There is nightly builds available. And let me actually post that link because you can test this. As of today, that build is available for testing. So I'm going to come over and show you where you can get 4.0.1, a kind of a test version, if you like. Um, where is it again? Nightly builds page. Where did I put the nightly builds page? Oh, development builds for MuseScore. So I'm going to post this link into the chat. Nightly builds. So this page here with the nightly builds, if you go to where it says MuseScore 4.x master and get the ignore the one that says beta, get the nightly for either Windows or Linux or Mac OS. The, the Windows build will be a zip file and you just unzip it and you don't actually install it. You'll just run the uh, run MuseScore from within from from within the folder that it unzips to. Uh, Linux gives you an app image. Mac OS gives you a DMG or whatever that file is called. So um, these this will now be if I click on like say the Linux version, you'll see there is a latest. And that's what you're going to want. So you'll want the one that says MuseScore Nightly Latest, not the one that says Z-Sync if, uh, if you're on Linux. If you're on Windows, you'll just see this 7-zip file. So by downloading that file, you can test what's going to become 4.0.1 and make sure that it really does fix this corruption issue. It's not going to uncorrupt your existing scores that you're going to need some help with and the uh the forum uh is your best bet for that so um chad's downloading a newer mac oh okay so yeah that's uh that that'll be uh, a little process there so um <clears throat> all right so let's um let's uh regroup a little bit i'm gonna flip over to another score because uh, this everything that I said that uh, that I'm seeing here is all about this first page. That's all the issues there are. After that, everything's fine on this score. From here on, every everything else just kind of works, and it all looks and plays fine. It still bugs me that I haven't figured out why this. Um, this isn't fitting on the first page anymore. Is there some other setting I had tweaked that I have to tweak again? I mean, I can certainly go, I'll tell you what I would do if I just like needed it to fit. I would go to format, page settings, and just reduce that staff space a little bit. You know, no one needs a, the, the, a, the score to be that big. In fact, I could probably make it smaller still, but this allowed it to fit comfortably. So that's what I would do. If, if something just doesn't want to fit, that's your ace in the hole. Just make it a little smaller. You can try to compress things and squeeze things around, but what you end up with is an overcrowded score. Making it smaller, you might think, oh, that's going to make it harder to read. But no, just a tiny bit smaller. And that was only a tiny bit from, from a staff space of 1.75 to 1.7. That's like a 2%. I don't know. I'm do, I'm doing math in my head, but it's 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 a very it's a it's a very small. It's like yeah, it's like three percent. It's a three percent reduction in the staff size. It's negligible, but it allows things to fit. And by making things smaller, it allows whatever amount smaller it is means now there's more white space on your page, and that's good for readability. So people are often afraid to make things a little smaller, thinking it's going to make things harder to read. But the reality is it's usually better to make them smaller than to make them more crowded. That's a little lesson for you here. So I'm going to go ahead and, as I said, uh, regroup a little bit and just try a different score. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a piano score. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead 
and there's a number of scores I could pick, but I think I'm going to pick Reunion because it was designed to do almost everything, right? Re uh, Reunion has like tons of stuff in it. That's its whole point for existing to be a demo. And so there's also a known issue with the playback. I know that's going to affect Reunion because I've imported it before. But I want to talk about what we're going to do uh, what we're going to do here to, um, you know, to see what I might need to do to make this thing look right. So the first question is, is there anything that looks obviously off? This is the MuseScore 3 version. And in fact, let me, let me close that again because I want to, I want to pay attention to the dialogue that popped up because I, I sort of ignored it because I'm used to ignoring it. But let's look at the dialogue that appears when you import an older score. So when you import an older score, it says, please note the appearance of your score will change due to improvements we have made to the default settings for beams, ties, slurs, system, and horizontal spacing. Okay, and in this particular case, it's not giving you any options. I think if scores were in older versions still, it gives you some options about whether you want to update this or update that. So in this case, it's not giving me any options. It's just warning me that there might be some changes. So I know what Muse, what Reunion normally looks like, but I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is open it in MuseScore 3. Whoops, that's not MuseScore 3. Where's my MuseScore 3 window? Here's my MuseScore 3 window. I'm going to go ahead and open that same score here so we can talk about what looks any bit different. Oh, uh, Joachim is asking how the automatic crash reporting works. Basically, it doesn't. There might be something going on under the hood. I don't know for sure, but um, those reports aren't going to be anywhere near as useful. I don't think MuseScore 4 even has that enabled, although I could be wrong. But in any case, without there being an actual issue posted to GitHub with an actual score and precise steps to reproduce, the crash report is next to useless. So the automatic crash reporting, even if it exists, isn't, isn't very useful. Um, if it turned out that there was one crash that tons of people were, were running into the exact same crash that hit the same, that crashed in the same spot in the code over and over and over and over, and no one had figured out how to reproduce it, but there were a ton of crash reports, then by looking at the crash reports, that might help someone narrow down how to reproduce it. But in general, you, you can pretty much forget that that even was ever a thing. All right, so I'm going to look at this score, and there's a few things that I know I had to adjust manually. There's a lot of things I adjusted manually, actually, in my score in MuseScore 3. But one thing in particular is this measure here has three uh, voices in it, and this one here had... a. Uh, or three voices just on that one staff. This one here had some manual adjustments having to do with how I dealt with the, the triplet bracket there and stuff. So I want to take a look at those because I know to sort of, you know, expect those things to be a little different. And in fact, it looks like it preserved that fine, but the triplet bracket definitely looks different here. And I think it's because the manual adjustment that I made is no longer appropriate. So in MuseScore 3, I had adjusted this thing. Let me control R it. See, in MuseScore 3, it looked like this by default. I just hit control R. Did that not show up? Oh, yeah, because, yeah, you're not going to see my shortcuts when I'm in MuseScore 3. But I just reset this one. In MuseScore 3, the default position of that bracket was bad. So I had adjusted it manually. In MuseScore 4, that same adjustment is now counterproductive. This is the point. If, if there's one take-home that you want to make from that you want to get from this because I'm all over the place right because who knows there's every score is going to have its own little things that you might need to fiddle with but the main take home is workarounds that you used in MuseScore 3 to work around some bug or limitation or whatever those workarounds may no longer be necessary and may now be counterproductive so I had previously, in MuseScore 3, manually adjusted this tuplet bracket because the default 
was useless. It was horizontal. That's, that, that does not look right at all. Um, so in MuScore 4, though, that same adjustment that said, hey, let's change the left handle by dragging it down the X amount of distance or Y amount of distance, that same adjustment is a bad adjustment. So I want to reset it now, and you'll see the default in MuScore 4 is much better. Well, this is the case that MuScore's default spacing. Also, look at you know, things like the spacing here is really weird, right? It, it needed all this extra space in, in the middle of that in the middle of that triplet. MuScore four doesn't need all that extra space. On the other hand, subjectively speaking, I might look and say, well, maybe this dot here that goes with this D looks a little confusing next to those uh, Tenuto markings here. Maybe I would be better off adding a little space to this measure. So maybe what I want to do is stretch that measure a little bit. Just stretch it a notch or two so that um, it looks a little less crowded. That's a, a subjective decision to make. But other than that, this all came through pretty well. Um, yeah, even this, this um, stuff that I did here, I, I actually hadn't remembered that this stuff worked as well as it did. But you see these ties here? These ties that are uh, broken up across that arpeggio? That's, um, that's done by having this uh, bit of... This is a white graphic that I pasted. Is <laughs> a this is a like has been the long time workaround for this. You know, wanting to have the ability to have ties that kind of stop. And so that position of that graphic, I needed to update slightly because where I had it be where 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 it ended up now, it didn't totally look right. So I have to adjust that graphic a tiny bit. So when I look at this score. Yeah, that might be the only, that might be about the only thing that I see that needed adjustment. What do y'all think? I mean, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm flipping around so fast, it's hard to tell what's happening. But I, I, I kind of think this all worked well. However, there are some improvements that I really would love to be able to take advantage of. By the way, we're talking about advantage, uh, improvements, um, can I show you, does this have any good examples? Just the overall note spacing is better, but it might not be in a way that's particularly obvious in this score. I don't know. Um, yeah, um, this distance between the eighth notes in this measure is different than the distance between eighth notes in that measure in mu score three. In mu score four, it's more consistent. That's the sort of thing you can expect mu score four to improve. So that will improve automatically. But here's something that I might want to take advantage of. MuScore, you see all these markings that I put in here, Poco Rit and Pilmoso Rit, all these markings that were actually just the Rits. Um, these were, um, the, this, is, this is fake. MuScore 3 didn't have a way to do a retardando. Right, all you could do is put in tempo markings. It couldn't gradually slow down. So this is a fake marking here. Um, so you know what I could do. This is just a tempo marking. It's just going to slow down suddenly. It's not a gradual slowdown. Same with this one. This is a sudden tempo change. If I want it to be a gradual tempo change, though, MuScore 4 now supports it. So I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to select that range. And I'm going to add an actual, under the tempo palette here, add an actual retardando line. And now it's actually going to do a retardando, not a fake one. It's going to actually slow down gradually. And so forth. So, um, so... I, I see that Maureen's asking a question and your your picture's not coming through yet, so let me let me pop in here about the picture. Um see if I can see what you're uh looking at here. Eh, come on. Yeah. It's not showing up here. Can I see it over here? I wanna open my chat window because I wanna see the picture that you're looking at. Hmm. For some reason it's not coming through yet, but it 
presumably it will. Your other picture did. But yeah, the um, uh, horizontal spacing is largely improved, but it definitely means there might be specific examples where that uh, that change has a ripple effect on something else and um, yeah there might be some different manual adjustments needed so this score to my uh, to my reckoning did a really good job of coming in pretty unscathed um, all I really needed to adjust was I needed to fix that tuplet bracket because I had made a manual adjustment that is now counterproductive. I also subjectively decided to add a little space to that measure just to avoid that dot possibly interfering with the tenuto marking and, and looking like it was an articulation. By the way, the other solution to that is just to take these tenuto markings and flip them above. That's not normally where they might go, but uh, you could consider it, right? It, there's rules for where things go, and under normal circumstances, you follow the rules. But when you come up to situations where things are complex and tight, you get to decide, is that really what I want? When I look at it now, I'm like, no, nah, I don't really like that. I'm going to flip them back down. Um, now, was that the default? Yeah, that was the default position, actually. The default position is here, because that is the default position, is on the stem side for tenuto markings in multiple voices. But when you have the tenuto markings and the tuplet bracket, I feel like that's not ideal. And so that's why I had manually moved these down before by press selecting them and pressing X. Um, and I had done that in MuseScore 3, and MuseScore 4 honored it. But because it has better spacing, the spacing created a little conflict between that augmentation dot and the tenuto line. Now, meanwhile, Maureen has your... Has your picture come through yet? It looks like the picture still hasn't come through yet. Um, oh, uh, yeah, so let's talk about the um, retardando a little more since that question has come up here. Um, no, the retard the when you add a retardando in uh, in MuseScore four, it's going to um, slow down by a particular percentage. If I select that line and go to properties and then playback, you'll see it's going to slow down by seventy percent, and then uh, it's going to stay at that new tempo. You would need to add a new tempo marking. So generally speaking, right, you would add a tempo. So what I might do. In this case, I wanted to actually come back to a faster tempo than I started. But if I didn't want that, I could add a tempo marking, Alt-Shift-T, and write a uh, tempo. Uh, okay, I, I, know, I know about that. Um, Double-click this thing. If you select all the text and start typing, you get a weird font because it's looking at the note. And it was actually a very similar issue in MuseScore 3. This note is from a different font than the rest of the text. So I want to type a tempo in here, then go back and delete the note. So now I have my a tempo marking, and then I can uh, come over to the score and tell it, I mean, come over to properties and tell it specifically I want 120. So after retardando, you will want to put in an explicit tempo marking and be very explicit about what you want the new tempo to be. And I think MuseScore, I think in, you know, they've already added an a tempo marking for either 4.0.1 or another update after that, but it's not going to be smart enough to actually know what tempo you wanted to re. Uh, return to you'd still you could add it from the palette, but you'll still have to change its properties. So, um, Bob, yeah, okay. So, Bob, excellent question. That is, you you have indeed found a known issue um, that when you add uh, pauses to your score, the Sejora markings from the palettes where it says breaths and pauses breaths and pauses here. These markings here, the breaths and cesura markings here, they're meant to add uh, like a pause in your score, right? And a little three second pause or whatever. And that won't take effect until you save and reload. That is a known issue. And as far as other things that also require a save and reload, right now there's only one that comes to mind. Um, and that is if you open a music XML or MIDI file, then the chord symbols won't display properly. Uh, so 
chord symbols in a music XML file won't display properly right away, or if you open a MIDI file and try to add chord symbols, they won't display properly until you save and reload. There's other things that can uh, trigger it also. Um, but uh, anyhow, that's the one other thing I know of where save and reload actually makes a difference. It's possible there's others. So, um, so Maureen, I now see your picture, but I'm not sure what to do with the picture. I know you mentioned something about uh, a line and a hairpin looking like an accent, but what I see in the picture isn't... Um, I guess maybe this is... This box is meant to show me something above that note. Maybe you're putting a crescendo over that half note. Is that maybe the deal? I don't know. Let's just play with that. Let's have fun. Um, I'm going to add a half note. Oops. Shift W. Shift W again. Oh, I, I hit the wrong thing. After the crash, I uh, uh, didn't start MuseScore in the right way, so I'm not getting my keyboard logger, so I'll have to just tell you what I'm doing. Um, but... Uh, it's um, you tried adding a crescendo or a diminuendo, and you were saying it maybe looked too much like an accent. Yeah, so if you are going out of your way, you had them above the staff, or no, they weren't above the staff, it was below. Okay, let me select them and put them back below. So these markings here, uh, to me, that's fine. Uh, as it is, but your picture definitely shows you having a situation where that measure is narrower, and that measure looks entirely too nar narrow to me. Um, yeah, that measure is way too narrow. <laughs> your half notes here are taking less space than your 16th notes. That's not good, right? So I don't know if that's because you were applying stretch or something, but this is not good. Now, I will acknowledge that because these half notes have the tremolo markings and should be played as 16th. Maybe they shouldn't get as much space as other half notes. That's debatable, but this is entirely too narrow. So I'm guessing that you had applied some stretch there. Um, because normally, by default, these half notes would take uh, considerably more space than the 16ths, and then those hairpins would look better. So here's a case where I think your stretch is defeating you, and that you need to you need to uh, back off whatever stretch adjustments you might have made here because they're not um, they're not your friends. That's my uh, my take on that. So um, yeah, the, the things that I'm talking about here. Um, Ah, so Chris has got a really good question here. Um, I'm familiar with the music, and I know what it's likely to improve on. And if you're not familiar with the music, um, then what to look out for? So um, the, your idea... So let me, let me come back to Maureen for a second. You're saying that's the default? That, that doesn't look possible to me. Because um, you know, unless unless when I add the tremolo markings, that changes it. Let me let me try adding some tremolos. So I'm not seeing what you're seeing. So Maureen, you're gonna have to uh, act, you're gonna have to post somewhere and attach your score so someone can see what's going on because this is the default, not what your your picture is. Just does not look like the default at all. It looks looks like you've done something to change the stretch in that measure because the default should look much more like what I have here. So I'm not sure what's going on, but we would need to see the score rather than just a picture. So again, the uh, support forum on MuseScore.org or the space within my course are the places. So coming back to Chris, um, yeah, you know, I would absolutely, if, if there's a piece of music that you're not that familiar with, especially if you didn't create it yourself, you downloaded it or someone sent it to you, I wouldn't trust, first of all, that the person who created it did good things with it. They might have done things like made weird adjustments not knowing because they didn't know how to work the program that well. Um, that's possible. So I absolutely would recommend Control A to select all, Control R to reset. That's, so that's what uh, Control R is what you're saying, reset shapes and positions. I would absolutely recommend doing that. Yeah, there might be some adjustments they did that you'll have to reapply, but there's a really, really good chance that it's going to fix a lot of weird stuff they did. 
Frankly, I do that even not going from, like even in MuseScore 3, if someone sends me a random MuseScore 3 score and I don't know that person is an, is an expert engraver and an expert at using MuseScore 3, I'm going to reset their adjustments because probably they didn't do a good job and I would be better off starting from scratch. But that's more true in MuseScore 4 because MuseScore 4's defaults are so much better that, you know, resetting uh, is much more likely to get you to really good results. So, um, uh, Ariana is asking um, about um, using, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, so first of all, I've never used Sibelius or, or Dorico or Finale in the last 15 years or so, or 10 years at least, so I, I can't really speak. But yeah, in general, MS Basic, the default sound font is roughly comparable to the default sounds in other programs, and Mu Sounds is roughly comparable to Note Performer. This is definitely true. So, um so, yeah, Maureen, all I can say is we need the score because I just did this and it didn't work that way. So I, I don't I don't know what to say other than we'll need to see the score. It could be spacing settings were customized in, in or, you know, MuseScore score three had different spacing settings. But again, we would need to um, need to see. And as far as why some questions show up uh in the chats i don't know i mean i'm looking at it on three different screens here and i see different questions in different places and i i don't know what to tell you that the chat system is the chat system i didn't write it so i i can't take credit or responsibility for issues with that so um does MuseScore 4 actually engrave every well first of all everything is engraved that's not like a engraving is the process of putting notes on the page so yeah, everything, the, whether no matter what music, no matter what version of MuseScore the score was originally created in, it gets engraved in MuseScore 4 according to MuseScore 4's engraving rules. Just like MuseScore 3, this engraved everything according to MuseScore 3's engraving rules. MuseScore 2 engraved everything according to MuseScore 2's engraving rules. It's just that every version of MuseScore has better and better engraving rules. So um, in these last couple of minutes, I do want to just readdress something about the community itself because I mentioned that and I'm not going to belabor this because you know we we kind of went off into a lot of different areas here I do want to talk about the arrangement of things here within the course uh, within the the um, uh, within the community so one thing you'll notice is there is now start here so this is the set of spaces where new members uh, for, specifically for new members. This next section for general, these are things that apply to the community in general. So you'll see there is now community suggestions. This used to be called suggestion box. What I realized is that the majority of posts to suggestion box were people who had questions about MuseScore. That's not the intent. This is meant for suggestions about the community itself. So suggestions or comments, discussion about MuseScore is now going to go in the Mastering MuseScore section. And the Mastering MuseScore section has everything that relates to MuseScore. So that includes the cafe, it includes the course, it includes an archive of my tips of the week, and... Um, Oh yeah, that's also possible that someone might have directed a question at me personally. That's um, that is a that is a good possibility there, Dan. Can MuseScore four be adjusted uh, adjusted to dark mode? Yes, it absolutely can. And first, let me show how to do it on the site. So the Mastering MuseScore site, if you click next to where it says Mastering MuseScore, you'll see a switch to dark mode. Since I'm talking about the site within MuseScore, you'll go to View. No, you'll go to Edit Preferences appearance and here's where you switch to dark mode so there you go so um all MuseScore related stuff is now here and so you all managed to find it i'm glad to hear you found it um and now the music master class you'll notice is now moved within where it says music musicianship skills workshop it's still the case that there's aspects of this that are uh, membership only and i'm going to talk about that more tomorrow but the idea is stuff having to do with muse score is now collected kind of in one place stuff having to do with music musicianship is collected in one place and then you know it's still the case that for for members specifically office hours is a members only uh, uh you know gold level members only thing that's a special space just for gold level members these other spaces here are either going away or being transferred or you know being fiddled with but i wanted to just focus on the fact that i am trying to make this general this distinction now between here's an area for newcomers here's an area for general community stuff that's not 
not about any particular technical subject. Here's a section for stuff relating to MuseScore. Here's a stuff. Here's a section for stuff relating to musicianship. So anyhow, uh, I don't know. I mean, I this process of importing things into MuseScore four. There is no single. Uh, no single thing to expect. Generally speaking, things come through well, but there's any number of details you might have to look at, and you just have to go and look and see what you find. And so that's what I was doing here. And by all means, if you've got particular scores that you want help with, I recommend posting them in the support area within the course, and we can look at them together and uh, see if we can uh, um, uh, See if we can figure something out. So, Dan, you're mentioning ch changing the background. Yeah, if I use dark mode for MuseScore 3, then you would always know, and I would always know when we're looking at which. That's not a bad idea. I don't like dark mode that much, but maybe I can figure something else out. Um, so, anyhow, um, uh, final thing, Ariana, note performer. Yeah, someday it's certainly within the realm of possibility that note performer people will undertake the enormous effort that would be taken to integrate it with MuseScore. But it's an enormous effort that they would have to undertake, and they would also have to add support to MuseScore to make it happen. Muse sounds, most people say, is better. So I think the payoff would be very little. But yeah, it's certainly something that could happen someday down the road. So anyhow, that's um, now the um, the show here. And let me close this version of the theme song because this is not my good version of the theme song. The good version of the theme song is the one where I already made all the playback adjustments that I needed. And um, come on. Did I not do it or did it decide to, to freak out again? Might have decided to freak out again. That's all right. I'm just going to talk out and um, we don't need to hear the music. So, <laughs> So, um, mm -mm -mm. yeah, my system has um, decided to bog down and uh, get get weird on me. Um, how so? Um, I don't know what you're asking. How so would it be a lot of work? You, just because it is. How so is it better? I don't know. Most people say it sounds better. A few people say there's individual things that maybe Note Performer does a little better, but it's been out for a number of years. So uh, by the time, by the time uh, MuseScore... Uh, by the time MuSounds is out for a number of years, I will fully expect it to be just absolutely smash note performer with a sledgehammer. Right now, it's just most people say it's better. Anyhow, here's MuseScore 3 playing MuseScore 3. So, this has been a session where we looked at some of the things involved in migrating a score, and I'm sorry, I don't really have a strategy for you. Most things just work. I don't. I, I can't emphasize that enough. But I wanted to emphasize some of the things that you might want to look out for: spacing differences, manual adjustments that need to be changed, little details of playback, workarounds, and things that you might have to redo. You know, you get to play with this on your own to see what you need to fiddle with. But um, overall, most things are just going to come through and look better and sound better. So I focus this time on the gotchas. In other sessions we'll look at we'll focus on the what's better and really how to take advantage of things and make and really optimize the playback even further so tomorrow music master class we'll be looking at music and in particular i i do want you if you if you saw the newsletter or if you look in the community on the home page of the community i posted a link right to this uh clip from the movie amadeus check it out it's an interesting clip and i want to talk about it and we're going to do some uh we're going to do some ear training around that idea. So check out the clip, think about it, and come back tomorrow. Uh, and I look forward to talking about that in more detail. So um, thanks, everyone, and see you next time. Of course, i got to find my, uh, find my window. <laughs>